So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to make uh, the chomp noise every single time that Pac-Man eats one of the pellets. However, we don't want to play the same chomp noise uh, because it varies between two. So it goes chomp one, chomp two, chomp one, chomp two. So we're going to have to add two different audio sources and keep track of the last one that we used. So audio source, audio source. We're going to be doing this in our game manager because that is what's going to be handling all of this. We could technically give the chomp to Pac-Man because Pac-Man is the one eating the pellet. But the game manager needs to be aware that the pellet was eaten anyway because it's going to have to add it to the score. So it just almost makes more sense to do everything in one spot rather than making it more confusing than it needs to be. Okay, so let's go to our audio and we're going to look for chomp one. Oh, it's called munch maybe. Yeah, I think those are the ones. Yeah, munch one and munch two. So go to game manager and just on the first audio clip, drag in munch one. Then make sure you don't play on awake. We don't want to play the munch as soon as the program loads. And we don't want to loop it either. And then, oh, I did it backwards. We're going to put munch one up here and munch two down here. And we're going to make sure this one is also not set to play on awake. Then we're going to go to our game manager and just add another audio source for munch one and munch two. And then we're going to have a int called uh, current munch. And we're going to set that to zero by default. So let's save the game or save the script. Okay, so now we're going to minimize our siren audio source and we're going to drag our munch one audio source into munch one and then we'll minimize it and do the exact same thing with the next one okay and now we have access to our munch sounds however our game manager is not being alerted when we've eaten a pellet so we are going to make a function public void collected pellet and we are going to send in the node because we're going to need to know if the node is a power pellet eventually. So we're just going to make sure to send in the node controller. Oh, whoops. And now if we go back to our node controller, we can see uh, where we did this code, where we turn our pellet off. We are going to access our game manager. Oh, we haven't declared game manager in the script yet. So we have to declare public game manager, game manager, and then in awake. Remember, we can't do get component because game manager is not a component of our node. So we have to do game object dot find game manager. And then once we find that game object, we can then get the game manager component. So then we're going to call game manager dot collected pellet and we're going to send in this and that's basically just going to send in this script. So if you type in this, it's a keyword and it just references the current script that you're you're in. So it'll automatically just send in the node controller. So here we're going to have access to the node controller and we are going to say if current munch equals zero then munch one dot play else if current munch equals one then munch two dot play and we're also in here going to set current munch to be one and then here we're going to set it back to zero so if we are on zero, play one, set the next one to one. Once I collect another pellet, this will be one. So it will then play the second munch. 
and then it will set current munch back to zero. So I believe this should be working. It is not. We are getting um, an error object reference not set to an instance of an object. Okay, so it is not recognizing our game manager. Did we do something wrong here? Game object dot font. Oh, so we got the game manager, but then we didn't assign it. So we need to do game manager equals. Let's try that again. So it is working, but it's also calling the chomp noise when we aren't eating the pellet. And that's an easy solution. We're supposed to do if collision.tag equals player and is pellet node and has pellet. Although technically, we would never have has pellet set to true if it wasn't a pellet node. So we could probably just get rid of this is pellet node because has pellet node will only be true if the node contains a pellet. Let's try that again. Okay, and it is working. And we can even slow down our speed if we want to test it even more. And then you can clearly hear that it's working. Okay, so we have indirectly just solved another problem. Um, while making this chomp sound work, we also have given our game manager access to collected pellet whenever we collect a pellet, which is really good because we are going to have a score. And we're going to need to do a few more things eventually, um, such as, well, we're going to add to our score. But then we're also going to need to check if there are any pellets left to end the level. We're going to need to um, check how many pellets are eaten to spawn the ghosts because the ghosts spawn depending on how many pellets you've eaten. We're going to need to check is this a power pellet? If it is, go into power pellet mode. So this is just stuff we're going to be doing later. But for now, we're just going to create a public int score. Um, and then we should be initializing everything not up here, but in awake. Which eventually we're going to change to a setup function. But for now, let's just make sure we set everything in awake to zero. Okay. So now we're also going to need a public text whoops score text and I believe we need to add using unity engine dot UI is that it yeah so your text will give you an error until you add this using unity engine dot UI at the top so we're going to have our integer, which is going to keep track of our score. And then we're going to have a physical like line of text above our game board. And we're just going to set that text to always equal our score. So we're going to have a function, public void add to score. And we're going to send in an amount. And we're just going to say score plus equals amount. And then score text dot text equals score dot to string so a line of text is a string um, an integer is a whole number and this dot to string basically says convert our integer into a string so that we can set the text property which is also a string and then down here we're just going to call add to score 10 and now every time we add to score we don't have to redo this score text dot text equals thing we just have to call the function once so now we need to actually create our text so let's zoom out a little bit um, and we're going to right click here and click ui and text and we're just going to name this score text and we're just going to set text to score. And then let's see where that is. So right now we've been looking at our game view, but the canvas handles UI stuff, such as like text and extra images. Um, and you have to zoom out really far in order to see it. 
So you're going to see this is our canvas, and at the bottom left of our canvas is our game. So as you can see, the score text is at the very bottom. We're going to drag it up to the top, right around here. And if we click our game view at this point, we should see it. Uh, so the text color needs to be white. And now we can see our score. If you still can't see it, just mess around with here. What you can do is you can put it like right in the middle. And if we go back to our game, you can see it very clearly. And then you can adjust it like this using the Y position. Okay, we're going to increase the size of this a little bit to basically as big as we can get without cutting anything off. Now one thing that's cool, we could actually go download the Pac-Man font and set it that way. We're not going to be doing that here, but feel free to do that yourself. That would be cool. Um, another thing too is we actually want to set this text to be score colon plus. So it will set it to score and the actual number. Now let's load up our game. Actually, this still isn't going to work because we have not referenced our score text publicly. So score text, none. We're just going to drag that into there. And now our game manager has reference to our score text. So you can see our score is going up every single time we eat a pellet. And eventually, once we start eating the ghosts, our score is going to go up from them as well. One thing I want to point out too is immediately, as soon as we start the game, we're not moving. We actually want to be moving as soon as we start the game. So what we're going to do is just set our last moving direction to be left. And actually, if we go into our movement controller we can set this manually you want to be careful about how much stuff you set in the inspector because sometimes if you change one little thing it can delete a lot of the stuff that you did in the inspector so I like to set a lot of it in awake instead another thing we're going to want to do is these two pellets shouldn't actually exist so we're going to delete the pellet here and we're going to make sure it's not a pellet node. Well, I guess it won't be a pellet node when the program loads because it won't have the pellet. So we delete the pellet. And then we're going to take Pac-Man and put them in the middle. You can just set it to zero, yeah. So now when we start up the game, uh, he should automatically be moving to the left. 